This is a transistor. It's one of the most important things ever invented. Without the transistor, personal computers, let alone smartphones, wouldn't even exist. But what does a transistor do, and how does it work? In order to fully understand what a transistor does, we first need to take a look at this very basic electric circuit. It consists out of a DC power supply, which could be a battery or something, this is the positive side and this is the negative side, and a resistor. And this resistor could be an electric motor or a light bulb, any electronic device really. Down here, we've also got a switch. And the switch has one very simple task, turning the power on and off, obviously. Now it's in the open or off state and it's blocking the electric current, which means that this device right here is, well, turned off. And when we flip the switch into its closed or on state, the electric current can flow from positive to negative through this device, which means that it will start rotating if it's a motor or light up if it's a light bulb, whatever. So a switch is very is a very basic electronic device that can block the current whenever you want it to. The switch does the same thing as a transistor. A transistor could be seen as a switch. And I'm now going to demonstrate that by getting rid of the switch and replacing it with this transistor. A transistor has got three pins. The source, which is basically the input, the drain, which is the output, and the gate, and we'll talk about that one later on. So let's just hook it up to our little circuit right here. As you can see, the transistor is now blocking the current. The electric current cannot go through the transistor. Um, in other words, it is now acting like a switch in its open state. But when we take a wire and connect one end to the gate of the transistor and connect the other end to the positive side of our power supply right here, you can see that the current starts flowing again. This transistor becomes conductive when you apply a positive voltage to the gate. And when we stop applying the positive voltage, the transistor is no longer conductive. So basically, a transistor is just a switch with no moving parts that can be operated using electricity. So how does this work? Well, transistors are made out of a so-called semiconductor. That's a material that sometimes conducts electricity and sometimes not. Normally, the semiconductor doesn't conduct and the current cannot go from the input to the output. But when you apply a voltage to the second pin of the transistor, that creates an electric field. This electric field makes the semiconductor become conductive so that the current can now flow through. When we stop applying the voltage to the second pin, the semiconductor stops being conductive again. So now why are transistors useful? Well, transistors can be used to create so-called logic gates. A logic gate is a bunch of transistors that can perform a simple operation. For example, this is a so-called AND gate. In this AND gate, both transistors need to be on in order to turn on the light bulb. And this is an OR gate. And in an OR gate, either the first transistor or the second one or both need to be turned on in order to turn on the light bulb. Now the AND gate and the OR gate are very simple gates with just two transistors, but there are many other gates that are more advanced as well. If you take a whole load of gates and combine them in the right way, you can create machines that can perform more complex operations, aka computers. One very important thing to realise is that the transistors in your computer processor aren't like this one. In fact, they are much much smaller. The transistors in a modern day CPU have a size in the nanometer scale. They are invisible, even using a microscope. This allows for having billions of transistors on a very small chip, making computers more powerful, more energy efficient and even smaller. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.